Hey everybody, my name is Toby. Welcome to my channel, Tales from the Treadmill. Here we talk about my past addiction issues, uh, my road to recovery, and the light that I've found in sobriety. If you're new here, please click the like and subscribe buttons and help me out. And, and, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to help some of you out too. Uh, if you are actually currently struggling with any of these addiction issues, please comment or send me messages. Um, I'd love to help you out in any way that I can. I'll share any kind of stories or advice or wisdom that I may have. I'm not a licensed professional, although I think I might be going for something like that soon. Um, but I have life experience. <laughs> and I have been sober now for almost three years. And I'm so excited every day. So I hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, you know, we went to the drag races yesterday. My father-in-law, Larry, took me and April and his buddy Sam out there. Uh, and man, what an exhilarating experience. You know, I know what Motley Crue means now when they were talking about kickstart my heart. Man, it was an incredibly exhilarating thing to, for those cars. They're going like upwards of 335 miles per hour. And when they were right on the starting line and when they kick and they go, it hits you right in your chest. And loud, it's so loud. The sound is deafening, man. It's it's really awesome, and it was a really fun experience. Unfortunately, you know, the Dallas Cowboys lost last night. One thing that I also have found in my sobriety is I don't get nearly as mad about that kind of thing. I used to get so angry, man, while I was drinking. I would get so angry about those games, but I don't let it affect me that way anymore. You know, I'm all about having my peace and, uh, and everything. And I love the Cowboys, and I always hope they win. Um, I've been a fan of them ever since I was born, pretty much born into it. I had a Dallas Cowboys bike when I was a kid. It had uh, Tony Dorsett's number on it. I actually got to meet Tony Dorsett, which I'll probably do another video on those kind of things later on. But uh, anyway, yeah, it sucks they lost, but, you know, we'll get them the next time at the end of the year. Uh, anyway, I'm excited about today's video because today is the last video in the series of where my addiction started, began, into where I'm going to be, you know, I get sober at the end of 2019. So I'm excited for this video. What I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to take these videos, put them in a playlist, and then title it, you know, my past addiction struggles, that story, whatever, so that when people come to my channel, if they want to learn about that and they're new, they can go watch those videos, and then I'm going to start my new series of uh, what happened starting in 2020 with my sobriety to now and how my life has changed. And I can't wait for that. But anyway, there's a couple stories that I want to tell that happened between 2017 and the end of 2019 uh, that were pretty big in my life. So I'm still backsliding. I'm playing in Jive. We released Epic Tales of Human Nature. We were playing shows in support of that release. You know, we got to play some really cool shows. Um, one thing that I did want to talk about is, you know, there's a million reasons why I needed to quit drinking. Uh, there were zero reasons to continue. It wasn't fun anymore. If it's not fun anymore, why are you doing it, right? But there's a million reasons why. One of the biggest reasons is, you know, I started getting older. I'm in my mid-40s. <clears throat> uh, and I'll never forget this. This is actually going back a little bit because we were still recording the record. But I want to tell this story because it's important. Um, in 2016, I believe it was leap year, uh, we were still recording the record. So it's February 29th. I'll never forget because it was actually leap day. Whatever. Uh, I had been working the night before and uh, in Louisville at my bar and I probably had four or five double vodka Red Bulls right I get home uh, not not nothing crazy I mean for me that wasn't much I mean honestly um, nothing crazy I get home the next morning April gets up to go to work and <clears throat> I had set an alarm and um, and I woke up when she did but I, w I went back to sleep when she left but I had this really awful dream. It was a nightmare, and it was basically just people fighting and cursing at each other and stuff like that. And it woke me up, and when it woke me up, my heart was pounding. Like, you know, and I kind of woke up, and I'm like, well, that's weird, but I've still got like 30 minutes. I wanted to get that sleep in because I was having to drive out to uh, Austin that day to go record, you know. Um, so anyway, what ends up happening is I'm, th I'm thinking, well, I just need to lay back down. It was just a bad dream. When I went to go lay back down, my heart starts racing harder. So I get up, <clears throat> and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I just need to get up because I need to go get tires on my truck and stuff like that. So I got up, I went into the living room, and it was pounding harder and harder and harder, and I started getting, like, lightheaded, and I started thinking, good, no good Lord, what is happening? Am I having a heart attack? So I went and put some pants on. I didn't want to go outside, you know, but I felt like I needed to get outside. So I got my phone, I put some pants on, went outside, it was a very dreary day. There was like fog that was setting. And I immediately, it immediately got worse. My heart's pounding. I'm thinking, you're having a heart attack. This is what this is. You're having a heart attack. So 
<laughs> what I did was I called 911. They asked me, you know, I was on the phone with them. I'm like, hey, I think I'm having a heart attack. I need an ambulance. Uh, so they were like, hey, you need to get some aspirin. Do you have aspirin? Do you have anything? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I think I'm, I think, you know, I mean, it felt like I was about to croak. <laughs> That's what it felt like. So I found some aspirin, and as I'm on the phone doing that, I hear the sirens. Like, they were very fast. I got to say, Rowlett Fire Department got there so fast. Uh, it was, you know, they're right down the street from us, but it was literally maybe a minute or two, you know. Uh, I told the person on the phone, hey, I can hear the sirens, and they're like, stay on the phone with us, and I'll go out front. Here's the ambulance. I, the guys get out. They take me in the back of the ambulance. They hook me up to all these, all these things, and I'm laying there, and the guy was like, man, do you have anxiety? And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't, I don't have anxiety. I'm a pretty laid back person. I don't, I don't have any. He's like, well, I think you may have had a panic attack. Your heart rate is really high. Um, and, uh, he asked me if I did drugs. He asked me if I had told him I had a few drinks the night before, but I hadn't dr done drugs like that in years. Um, and the only time that ever happened to me before was when I was doing like speed up kind of drugs back in the day. Um, and he said, well, I think you really, I think you had a panic attack is what this was uh, because your vitals are okay. Everything is calming down. I think once they came and I knew I was, uh, you know, around, so I was, wasn't alone, things started to settle down. But anyway, I truly did feel like that was, a, and that was something that made me think like, man, that's weird. That's, that, that's not normal. Then suddenly things started happening when I would drink. If I'd go out and drink, I, I was whirling the Jack and Cokes, double Jack and Cokes. I would have, you know, Diet Cokes because I didn't want the sugar, right? But I would drink like five or six or seven of, doubles of those. And then I would try to sleep. And when I would lay down, I would feel my heart start pounding, like just out of my chest. Or, then, or, or I'd feel like my heart rate in my earlobe. And so now I'm thinking, dude, if you went to a doctor right now, that doctor would tell you, you need to stop drinking. <laughs> and again, I didn't have insurance. I didn't have money to go to the doctor. So I started telling myself, dude, you really have got to slow down. So anyhow, back into 2017, we released the record. We're touring. I'm still falling into the trappings of that because uh, I'm bartending. So, uh, but uh, like I always try to tell people, the train was coming into the station. It's like, chun, 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 you know, all these things were happening. And I kept thinking, man, none of these are good. I should quit drinking. But, I, but it's very hard. Alcohol is a very hard drug to quit, just straight up, especially when you're around it all the time. It's legal. Um, you know, you're getting it free because you're playing shows or whatever the case may be, right? Well, so we did some shows. The last show that we played was with Slash and Miles Kennedy um, in uh, Houston at the Houston House of Blues. It was, uh, it was a sold-out show. You know, we had played some shows on the East Coast and in Texas with Theory of a Dead Man before that. So we were doing some really cool stuff. We had played with Saliva, uh, a couple things. Um, so we are out there doing it again, right? But uh, 2018, end of 2018, uh, Joe, the singer for Jive, gets in a motorcycle wreck in L.A. It stopped everything. We were just about to go on tour with Candlebox, actually, and be their main support for several dates. And everything stopped, you know. And, and when that happened, I started taking a really good look at my life. Um, some other traumatic things happened in that moment. My daughter's grandmother passed. She got, uh, she was told that she had stage four pancreatic cancer and that's a, that's a real bitch. I mean, it comes in, whereas my mom's was a long 25 year, uh, you know, Parkinson's uh, thing where we watched, you know, a slow decline. Um, this was something that came in and eight weeks later, she was gone. It was devastating to us. It was devastating to my daughter. Uh, you know, and watching her suffer, and through that, it was very difficult for me as her dad. Um, you know, that whole year in 2018, I hadn't, I'd been not drinking very much because I'd been doing the keto diet, <laughs> trying that trend, and it worked for me. I lost a bunch of weight on it, but again, it's very hard to, it kind of sets you up for failure, but I hadn't been drinking very much through to the beginning of 2018 up until that point, and then when that happened, I kind of started drinking again, um, and, you know, fell out of what I was doing with the keto stuff, gained several pounds. And, you know, man, I can look at a cheeseburger and gain a pound. Literally, it's it's insane. So, uh, but, man, I really started to examine my life. So we're getting into 2019. I started playing a ton of golf. I had been playing golf a few times a year prior to that. Um, but I really decided I wanted to go for it, you know, and, like, learn how to be better at it. And it's a very difficult game, but it's also – very rewarding too. Um, and when you're out there, you're just out in nature for several hours and it's like an escape. 
And that's what became my escape. So I'm still drinking in 2019, but it's really slowing down. The band's not doing anything. Uh, our, our relationship had pretty much uh, got to an all-time low, again, for me anyway. I realized, you know, I started realizing my self-worth. And um, I'm not going to go into too much of it right here, but when someone is not valuing you as a person and disrespecting you as a person, they're not, they don't have a seat at my table anymore. You know, I give people second chances, but I don't give thirds anymore. You know, I always find myself being the bigger person. And it's good to be that, right? But it can also be highly annoying when you're dealing with people that have narcissism and people that have ego issues. And it's, uh, it was several people in my life that I had to let go of, but I'm going to talk about that on another video. So 2019, I'm really slowed down, I'm still bartending, playing a lot of golf, and I'm still drinking. So I'm out on the golf course, when I start sucking, I'm like, well, I guess I should have a couple beers. And I noticed that when I would have beers, I would play 10 times worse, and it was awful. So I actually first quit drinking on the golf course. I was like, I'm not going to drink, I don't care how bad I suck, I'm not going to do that anymore because I don't want to ruin this because it was so, it was such a good feeling. I didn't want to walk away, even if I sucked. And if I didn't drink, I still felt like I had a great time. But when I drank, I felt all dejected. And, you know, because that's what alcohol does. It's a depressant, right? So as we get into the later parts of 2019, I'm having a few beers here and there at my at the end of my job. You know, we couldn't drink on the job, which was great. But afterwards, we could have a couple beers and a shot maybe. And so I was doing that on occasion, hanging out with the other bartenders and just chatting after work. Um, but it was really slowing down. And then... A good one of my best friends we were playing music together and he has a, had a bunch of really great ideas and we were I was helping him write these ideas and we were about to get in the studio and record them and he was struggling with these very issues that I'm talking about you know and I'm going to talk on this on another video I'm not going to get real far into it right now it's part of what happened leading up to my sobriety is that my buddy uh, passed um, in October of 2019 I was deeply affected by this, uh, as everyone in our lives were. It was very, uh, it was very out of nowhere, it felt like. Um, and again, I'm going to talk on this because I feel like I want to dedicate a whole video to this. Um, but what ended up happening was at the funeral and afterwards, you know, I think I had a couple drinks, but something hit me like when I'm standing there, I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this right now because if I do this, I'm going to go down a bad path. Uh, because I know where this takes me. It doesn't take me anywhere good anymore, ever. It takes me bad, play, bad places. So I put it down. Now, that was October. So November into December, I still had a couple drinks after work here and there, but it was really very little, a couple times maybe. Uh, so the last thing that happened I'm going to get into, there was a New Year's Eve party that a buddy of mine threw, uh, and he invited me in April over, and it was me and her and our friends, a few friends, and also bar it was mostly bartenders. And he had this awesome game room upstairs and a uh, you know, full bar, man. So we go up there, we're hanging out, and I, she was pouring them up, and I was asking for double Jack and Coke. She may have been doing triples. I don't know. <laughs> we're bartenders. That's what we do, right, for each other especially. Um, so anyway, I probably had four or five, maybe six tops, and April was drinking too. And there came a point where I realized, man, we need to go home. Um, you know, it was just too much. I was, you know, whatever. Get April in the car. She fell asleep and I'm driving home and I just, it, the waterworks, man, they just started and I realized that's it. This is it. This is no good for me anymore. Feeling this way is no good for me anymore. This is not fun. This is not happy. This is, this is depressing. This is, this takes me to a dark place that I don't want to be. Um, and I thought to myself, that's it. I'm never taking another drink of alcohol ever again. And uh, I got home, we went to sleep, and I woke up the next day. And December 30th of uh, 2019 was my first day of sobriety. And I've never looked back since. And um, I'm so happy that I made that decision. I know it took me seven years to get there, y'all, but it was worth it. It was worth fighting that battle because I won it. I won the battle. And my life has turned around. It's so much better than I could have ever expected, you know. My relationships are all better. You know, I was able to uh, relieve myself of all toxicity. And when I say that, I'm talking about my toxicity. You know, if you see that there's toxic people in your life, you got to really take a look at yourself first and understand you know, look up the definition of narcissism. I mean, what a narcissist won't do is look at the definition of narcissism and actually contemplate their own 
you know, acts that they could have that could have been narcissistic. That's what a narcissistic person won't do because they're never wrong about anything. But I started to examine myself and all the bad traits that I had and understood that I needed to fix them and work on me. And once I started doing that, man, the clarity that came along with it was so astounding and it still is. And I'm still working on myself every day trying to be better, trying to be better for everybody. But I'll tell you what, man, April and I, we have such a beautiful relationship with each other. That's one of the reasons why I think our marriage works so well is because, you know, the only time we ever used to argue was when we were drinking, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, and we would apologize, but we're really quick to apologize to each other when we know that we've done something wrong. And that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing in a relationship when you can actually say to the other person, look, I know I was wrong. I'm, you know, I'm very sorry for what I did. I'm not going to do that again. That's a very powerful thing. So uh, that's another, just all of my relationships became better. Um, all of my friendships uh, have blossomed with people and they have become better. And I've gotten away from the toxicity because I'm not putting out any of that toxicity anymore. Um, don't get me wrong. Nobody's perfect here in this life. We all make mistakes. But, but the thing is, if you can own up to your mistakes, you know, and apologize for them to the people that deserve to be apologized to, um, then, you know, that's the thing about life. It's just so beautiful when you can do that. So listen, guys, thank you again for being on this road of recovery with me. I'm glad to have come to the part where I started my sobriety story. Again, I'm going to put all these videos into a section so that people can look at them if they want to. But uh, the next video is going to start on my sobriety, things that changed in my life, and uh, what, what's been going on the last almost three years. So I hope you guys are going to have a great Monday and a great rest of your week, and I will talk to you soon. All right? Thanks. Oh, you know what? I'm going to grab this thing.